In this video, we're talking about the Clean Architecture using a document database on top of Postgres with the Martin library. We're going to create endpoints for updating and deleting an entity, and I want to highlight just how flexible Martin is when performing these operations. Let's implement the feature for updating a product. I'm going to start from the application layer and create a new feature folder. I'm going to call it update product, and let's define our update product command. So I'm going to add a new class, which is going to represent our update product command. Let's convert it into a positional record and let's define what we need for the update product command. We're going to need the ID of the product that we're updating. We're also going to need the name and the price. And we're going to need a list of strings that is going to represent the tags that we want to append to this product. And we have to make this record implement the I command interface so that we can send it using mediator. Let's also create a handler for this command. So this is going to be the update product command handler. We're going to implement the I command handler interface and we're going to handle our update product command. Let's implement this interface. We're going to be using the I document session interface that is coming from the Martin library. And I'm going to define a field for that interface so that we can inject it from the constructor. Now that we have the document session, let's see how we can use it to update our product. So I'm going to start out by making this method asynchronous and let's start by loading the product from the database. So to do that, we're going to use our session and we can call the load async method and specify what is the document that we want to load from the database. We want to load our product and we just need to specify the product ID that is coming from our command. And we can also pass in the cancellation token to support cancellation if we want to. So let's make the type of the product variable explicit because I want to highlight that this is an allable product, which means that we can receive a null value back from the database. So we need to handle that case. So if the product is null, we would want to return a failure result in that case. So if the product is null, let's return result failure. And we need to create a new error to specify that the product was not found. So let's quickly create a new error instance that we're going to pass into the result failure method. I'm going to give it a code of product not found. And for the error message, let's write something like this, the product with the ID, and let's specify the ID that we got from the route. So this is going to be the request ID. And we can say the product with the ID was not found. So if the product is null, we're going to return a failure result with the appropriate error. Otherwise, if the product was found, let's just update the properties one by one. So we would say product name equals request name, product price equals request price, and we can specify that the product tags equals request tags. So we are not performing any input validation. I'm just assigning the values directly to our product. And now we have to figure out how we want to tell our session that the product is updated. We have a few options here that we can consider. Let's take our document session. And one thing that we can do is call the store method and pass in the product. How the store method is implemented is it's going to do an upsert operation on the database. What this is going to do is if the product is not defined in the database, it's going to insert it. Otherwise, if it is defined, like in our case, the product is going to be updated. An alternative to this is we can call session update. And this is going to tell Martin to perform an explicit update on the product. The downside is it's going to throw an exception if the product does not exist in the database. So let's go with the session update variation. And to persist these changes, we need to call session save changes async. And let's also pass in the cancellation token. And after we have successfully updated our product and persisted these changes in the database, we can return a success result and complete our command handler. You can see that we're not relying on any automatic change tracking to update our entity, but Martin does actually support this. So let me show you how we can do that. Instead of injecting the I document session directly, what we need to do is inject the I document store. And this gives us more flexibility when working with Martin. And for the session, what we're going to do is we can create it by creating a new dirty track session. This creates a new document session which supports automatic change tracking. So in our handle method, we no longer have to call the session update method. We can get rid of this. And when we update the product, 
Martin is going to detect those changes automatically when we have a dirty tracking session open. And when we call the save changes method on the iDocument session, it's going to know how to persist those changes to the database. I personally prefer being explicit, so I'm going to use the variation where I'm telling Martin that it's supposed to update the product. And here I'm actually injecting the iDocument session. So I'm going to quickly revert these changes and let's see what we have to do next. So we have defined our command and our command handler. And now we just have to add our minimal API endpoint. We're going to define a put endpoint that is going to handle updating the product. So let's call app.mapput to define a put endpoint. We're going to give it a route of products and we're going to accept the product ID from the route. And we need to define a delegate that is going to represent our handler for this endpoint. So I'm going to make it asynchronous. And the first argument is going to be the product ID, which is coming from the route. So it's going to be a long product ID. Now we need to accept an argument from the body and this is going to be our update product request. Let's go to our create product request class and we're going to copy it and create a new record, which is going to represent our update product request because what we can update on the product is the name, the price and the tags. And let's just move it into a new file. So I'm going to say update product request, give it the name of request and let's add the from body attribute in front of the update product request to make it explicit that we should be mapping the update product request from the request body. I'm going to move the parameters into separate lines to make it more readable. And the last thing that we need is the I sender, which is coming from the mediator namespace. So now we have our request delegate and we can implement sending the command. I'm going to start by defining the update product command. And how we're going to define it is we're going to call request adapted to an update product command. And because our command is a record, we can modify it using the width expression to set the ID on our command. And we're going to take the product ID from the route. Now I can send the command using mediator by calling sender.send. And we're going to create a variable that's going to hold the result of our command execution. And now we can say if the result is a failure result, so if result is failure, let's return a not found from our endpoint. So I'm going to say results dot not found, and we can give it an object as an argument. So let's return the result error instance as that object. Otherwise, everything completed successfully, and I want to return a no content response. So I'm going to say return results dot no content. So this completes our flow for updating the product and I think it's a good point in the video to ask of you to smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And with that out of the way, we can go ahead and implement our delete product feature and I'm going to show you something very interesting that you can do with Martin. So let's go and create our feature folder for deleting a product and let's start by defining a delete product command. So let's create a class delete product command and all that we need on our delete product command is to define the product ID that we're going to be deleting. So I'm going to say this only has an ID of the product and let's make it an I command. All right. So this takes care of defining the delete product command and let's add the command handler that is going to handle our delete product command. I'm going to make this class sealed and we're going to implement the I command handler interface and specify our delete product command. And as before, let's implement this interface. So we're going to need our document session so that we can work with the database. So let's go ahead and inject an I document session instance. Let's generate a constructor. And now we can go ahead and implement our handle method. And here we have quite a bit of options because Martin is very flexible with how you can delete your entities in the database. I'm going to show you three options here for deleting the product. And I'm also going to mention the soft delete support that Martin has. If you don't want to load the entity from the database to check if it exists, then it's very straightforward. You just call session delete, specify which entity you are deleting. In our case, this is going to be the product and we just give it the product ID. And now when I persist the changes by calling session save changes async, Martin is going to go ahead and delete this product from the database and we can complete our command handler. So I can just say return result success and complete my command handler. 
So this is one option for deleting the product. I just specify the ID for the product that I want to delete and Martin handles the rest. The second thing that you can do is call the session delete where method and let me specify the product as the generic argument and now I can define a lambda expression to tell Martin which product I want to delete from the database. So I can define whatever criteria I want. For example, I want to delete all products with a given name or I want to delete all products that are too expensive and if you just want to delete a product with a specific ID, then you can write a lambda expression like this. So this effectively achieves the same behavior as in the previous example, it's just more verbose. So let me mark these so that we know what we're talking about. So this was option one, this is option two, and I want to show you option three, which is going to involve loading the product from the database. So let's go ahead and do that. The way to load a product is by calling session load async. Let's tell it to load the product with the ID coming from our request. We can also pass it the cancellation token. Remember that the product return from the load async method can be null. I'm going to disregard that for now. And the way that you delete a product entity is by calling session delete. And you just specify the product entity to the method. I'm going to give it a null for giving operator so that we don't get a compiler. So these are the three approaches for how you can delete an entity using Martin. But I mentioned that Martin has support for soft deletes out of the box. So how you can turn that on is I'm going to go to the Martin configuration. So here where we are adding the connection string to Martin, I'm going to configure our schema so that we can explicitly enable soft deletes on our product entity. So I'm going to say for product and I just need to tell it to enable soft delete by calling the soft deleted method. So this is going to turn on soft deletes for our product and back in our delete product command handler when we call the save changes method if the soft deletes feature is turned on it's not going to physically remove our product from the database it's just going to flag it as soft deleted another interesting thing that i want to highlight is if you turn on soft deletes for a given entity or table in the database how can you actually perform a hard delete in some situations? So Martin has us covered again because it has a hard delete method and the same options apply as in the delete method. So I can say hard delete a product with the given ID. So this is very useful when you want to support soft deletes, but also in some situations you want to perform a hard delete and completely remove the record from the table in the database. So now all that is left to do is to create a minimal API endpoint by calling map delete, creating a delete product command and sending it using mediator, which is going to trigger our handler and delete the product from the database. I'm going to leave the implementation for that endpoint as an exercise for you. Take a look at these two videos that you can see on the screen right now. And until next time, stay awesome.